What's up guys? So today um, I wanted to do something a, a little different, more like a healing guide per se. I feel like I definitely in the past kind of brush over this just because it's so accustomed to me at this point and I don't really think about it too much, but um, kind of listening to what you guys like to see and you know how you feel like you're struggling with healing and whatnot. Maybe I, I can give you guys some insight on how like the healing part, not so much the damage because you, you guys know I like to do damage, but you gotta also be aware of how to heal too. You are a healer. Um, but so I want to get try to go over like maybe some advice or some tips that you could use to you know improve your healing so that if you can improve your healing you can do more damage right that's the only reason why we heal right <laughs> so just to get started um, I was gonna go through some of all the healing abilities just so everyone's aware if anyone's new to rest or whatnot so scenario more this is this is a talent um, best talent in this row I wouldn't choose anything else if you guys want to see my opinions on or the talents and stuff I have my PvP guide still on my channel it's still updated I know uh, it is a different covenant but everything else pretty much the same um, okay so scenario more big heal that it will sit on you over time for 30 seconds and it does not trigger it doesn't start healing until you're attacked so it's actually really nice in a lot of scenarios like sometimes maybe like I have a double stealth team I'll pre scenario before I go in stealth because by the time this triggers, I'm, I have it on cool. I have it off cooldown already again. So it's actually really nice to be able to do that, you know. And this heal is non-purgeable, which is a really, really important part because purging is very relevant right now in Shadowlands. So having a you know a pretty decent hot and that can um, not be purged. So also it's, that's just good stuff. And for essence, I rarely use this. Um, you can run. You can try to run like Spring Blossoms. Um, and use it. I, I may I may sometimes use this for um, during during innervate, like when my mana doesn't matter. But the mana is not really worth it. You know, um, it costs about like two rejuves, and the healing is negligible. Like one reju, one reju does about almost four k here. This will do. Um, I guess more over the, the course of it, but um, you know, in PP you're always moving. Unlikely that you're going to be standing still in a green shroom, but it is useful in some scenarios. Some scenarios I typically don't really use it though. Flourish is a talent I personally use. I know a lot of people do not use this. A lot of, you'll probably see a lot of other um, YouTuber streamers that do not use this. Personal preference, I love this talent. I've been using it since Shadowlands pre-patch and haven't gone back to, to germination. It's just another burst um, burst healing button that you could press to help you get through, you know, burst. And the name of the game right now is trading cooldowns as a healer. And, you know, the most common complaint I, get, I hear about rest is you can't heal through the burst, can't heal through the burst. Yeah, it's tough, but if you have the cooldowns to manage to trade, it's can be, it can, uh, you can do it. Um, so that was that. And this one's amazing coupled with um, Sonarin Ward as well. So say, because especially like I was talking about the Purge meta, you could Sonarin Ward and then end up flourishing it. And Flourish extends all your hots and makes them tick 100% fa uh, faster. So it just makes it more effective. So it's like mega, mega hots, I call them. Um, so like, for example, if I have you Overgrowth and you Sonarin and you Iron Bark, now your hots are also taking 20% more. Um, then you flourish all that, you good, man. You good. Unless you're like, in, unless you're in like some crazy dampening, that heal, the, that combo is going to pretty much heal through anything, except for maybe like combustion. Then you might have to NS. But <laughs> life bloom is just a, uh, it's a hot over time that it, it uh, pretty weak hot as it is. But when it expires, it will bloom. Or if it's purge, it's bloom and does like a decent heal. If you guys do not know this about life bloom, if you re, um, let me pull up my uh, thing here. So that's uh, life bloom ticking. If you refresh, so I'll, I'll let it fall off first here. So when it falls off, you'll see a little bloom here, 3K. So that one's way more beneficial. That's like an entire rejuve. Um, a side note, you can actually refresh it within like about the four seconds, I believe it is. So I usually watch for that when it's just about to fall off here and then I press it. So it refreshes it and also you still get the bloom effect. Kind of, kind of a neat little thing, especially it's not really that important unless you're running focus growth, which is when you can three, you can triple stack it and make it heal more. Um, if you can do that, and it makes the bloom bigger, it makes uh, the actual life bloom bigger, and it can be pretty, very beneficial. If you, if you, if you're not running focus growth, you can just let it fall off and let the bloom go. But if you don't want your stacks to fall off, you want to be refreshing it right at the end. So bam, again, I get the bloom effect, and I still keep my three stacks. So that's important to know. Um, next one we have is Nature Swiftness. Nature Swiftness is a big burst heal. This is, you do not want to use this willy-nilly. You need this in a lot of cases. It's a huge trade on cool, especially 
for um, combustion. And so any other big, big, big ones? Oh, the hunt. Those are two that come to my mind. This, this, this whole, I'm sure there's more. But like two uh, buttons that are like literally just flat out bang 20k instantly. You need to have something that can you know pair very well with this. So um, you may hear me say like weak, weak NS or like probably it's called NS or weak or weak NS. So I tend to, you always want to, if you're running Soul of the Forest, which you should be, this is the best talent by far in PvP. Incarnation of Life can be used, I guess, but uh, Soul of the Forest by far the best. So what Soul of the Forest does is it makes your next Rego 200% stronger. This is what you always want to try to pair NS with. Because if you do, if you um, Soul of the Forest, you get Soul of the Forest by Soul Mending, then you NS, it's a ginormous heal. That was a 24k heal rather than doing a weak NS, which is gonna be, not it's not even gonna be close, it's gonna be uh, whatever regular regrowth is, 200% less than this. So um, definitely always worth, if possible. Sometimes I have to do it the other way around. If I like, let's say I'm coming out of CC and uh, I need to get a heal immediately, I don't have time to press rejuve, swift men, and then NS. Um, so in that case, sometimes I will NS first and then use that regrowth that's on them for swift mend. That makes sense. So in kind of doing the other way around, not ideal because it makes your NS really weak. You know, you don't want to pass up on that huge 24k. I've gotten up to 30k sometimes or more on, um, but you know, you get lucky with a crit or you know, amplifiers and whatnot. Next one is overgrowth. Uh, so this is just, it implies all of your hots at once and get everything going. Really, really useful, especially because Druid Mastery is based off of how many hots you have on. So you, you, be, you being able to overgrowth and then swift mend, that makes that swift mend that much stronger because you have all the hots on you. So you get more benefit from your mastery. Um, even if you're not stacking mastery, which I am not. My stats are down here, by the way. Um, you still get a nice little benefit from it. Uh, Reju, if this is your base hot heal over time that, you know, it's just going to be ticking. This is something you want to keep up if, if keep up at all times if someone's taking damage. Uh, if you are running germination, which is another option, so most people run, you get two of these. So I oh, can't click it here. But um, you be, you could just have two rejuves at once. I personally play the uh, the drought of defocus legendary, so that just makes my single rejuve a lot stronger. But it's just kind of a side note. I'm not gonna get into, get into that. I want to keep this on just the healing. Um, and then outside of that, we got swiftmen. So this is a big. This is like your kind of rotational burst heal that you need to consume a hot before using. Um, so it'll consume either a regrowth, wild growth, or rejuve. And so you got you can't just like if you don't have a hot on here, you can't just press regrow, um, can't just press with men. You gotta make sure you have a hot on prior to, and then you can sip men. Um, and this is very effective, especially running with Soul of the Forest, because it makes your next rejuve or regrow 200 percent stronger. And you know, that's just a really good rotational button. Like that just makes my re my rejuves take in 2600. That's a huge hot. Um, outside of that, what we got next? Trank. Trank is okay. I tend to really use it in either LOS situations. So like if I can't get to someone, someone's in a bomb, they're in a duel, a shadowy duel from a rogue, you can use Trank in those situations. Or sometimes I just Trank, like a lot of times you'll see me just Trank for like one second just to get the hot up, just for master benefit. I usually do it during Innervate as well. Um, not much really to it. Not, it's not a super strong hot. Like it's taking for 400 versus like, you know, um, I guess the initial one's not too bad, 2K, 3K. But it's just not as effective as regular bots, and it's pretty pretty hefty on the mana cost. Um, I think that's about it. Yo, where do these people just come from? Um, and just also side note, your Sarah's gift. This is just a passive heal if you don't know. So it heals you three percent of your max health every five seconds. If you're at full health, it'll heal an injured party member instead. This is a very subtle thing, but sometimes like if you're if you're sitting around like ninety eight percent health or something like that, it might be worth topping yourself off so that you can use your your Sarah's gifts while going to your teammate. And not really super useful to keep in mind, but just a side note. Okay, and then uh, is there anything else? A oh, regrowth. So this is your casted hot, and it also gives a uh, heal over time effect that's very weak. You, you mostly use regrowth for the cast, and if you don't know if you're spamming regrowth, it has a forty percent increased chance to crit. Get all the crits there. So if you if you do get a situation where you have to spam regrowth, it is very helpful to have something that's just you know going to be critting over and over. And that looks like about it. Oh, and then um, just so I guess for context, I am Necrolord at the moment. So I do have Adaptive Swarm. This is a periodic heal over time that uh, basically buffs all of your other hots. 
So if I have hots on me, while this is on, it's making all my other hots at the moment 28% more powerful. This is getting buffed in the next patch. So very, very beneficial in, when it comes to healing. And then it also bounces to this damage as well, but we're keeping this on healing. Um, and the two other abilities I want to you know point out for healing's sake, just because they're not actually heals, but they can essentially be healing because the, your teammate might not be taking damage, Cyclone. So a big thing I, that you know some people don't realize, especially if you're new to Ardrib, if you really can't heal through certain things, it might be better just to Cyclone it and then get the heals off. You know, having a target CC for six seconds is actually sometimes more beneficial than healing them for six seconds, if that makes sense. Because regrowth, you know, if you're spamming regrowths or whatnot and they're bursting, their burst is more than your regrowth. It's just, it's just how it is. So it might be a lot better to own the target and then have them, you know, and then let your let your partner get distance away and get you get the hots going and whatnot. Just way more effective than just straight up just spam healing, right? And then the other one is thorns. So thorns can kind of work in the same fashion where you could thorns your partner or thorns yourself and the teammate will get off of you because they do not want to take the damage. This could like pseudo work as a defensive for you and get the target off you so you can heal more. Same with on the... Oh, I forgot to talk about wild growth. And uh, yeah, wild growth, Not I pretty much never use it. Uh, I may sometimes use it during innervate. Uh, it's, it's more relevant in um, maybe like BGs or RBGs, if you're, especially if you're running early spring. But Rena. Not really much to it. I really never use it. It's just too much of a mana cost for the heals that it actually does. All right, I think that's about it on the healing on that. Okay, so next I want to go through just managing healing in arena and whatnot. This is kind of the bigger part. I have a uh... can't get rid of this. So all the name of the game is literally just trading cooldowns. All right, that is the name of the game when it comes to rest of your healing. So I have a, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bait, use this, my, this is a video, my, one of my previous videos. I want to use as an example here for how I heal. Um, so the best thing you really want to do is being able to, you know, the hardest thing to learn about healing is being able to pre-hot situations and trade cooldowns effectively. That is the name of the game being WrestleDruid. You have to heal proactively rather than reactively. You know, as a Holy Paladin, you don't have hots. You could just wait for your teammate to take damage and then boop, top them, you know? But as a druid, you want to, you're gonna have to be able to pre-hot or pre-bear form or pre-whatever it may be, so that the damage does less, and you're already prepared for the to heal through it, right? If you're, if you're, you know, sitting there with no hots on, like let's say myself, let's say these guys hodge and went super hard on me, now I'm in trouble, right? If I pre-hot the target, it lessens the effect because while during that stun or during that CC, they're getting healed at least a little bit, and I can, you know, I'm prepared to swift mend off the rejuve or something like that. So um, I know it's 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 harder than I wish I wish it wish it was easier, but especially if you guys are new to the game or new to Druid, it's the biggest thing is to learn other classes, right? Learn what other when other people pop in cooldowns and be able to pre-hot them. So right here, good example. This is the the clones from uh, images from uh, Windwalkers. So you're gonna see I'm I think I try to stop it first because if you like like what I was saying before with the cyclone, if you can stop the damage from the, in the first place, you don't have to heal it, right? So if you can stop the damage by, you know, cloning, stunning, whatever it may be, lining, um, you don't have to heal in the first place and then you won't have to worry about all this stuff. Um, but if you do, you're going to see I'm I'm going to I think I just start I'm going to start pre-hotting him. I try to clone him first. He's going to get out of it. I, I start I scenario ward, I life bloom, I rejuve, use everything here, I use thorns, um, and then I flourish it as well. So I use flourish with scenario. This is a massive hot one thing I could have done better in this place is not thorns there because like I was saying thorns will make people come off so this kind of made my flourish worthless because he I thorns him as well and I could have just maybe just thorns them and he would have swapped to me <clears throat> all right so another side note trying to bear from any stun this will mitigate damage you can mitigate damage you have to heal less so it's kind of just a that's just practice every time someone's coming near you especially if you know they have a hodge they have a stun like a monk's got a leg sweep you have a uh, stun from any other class. Always be ready to uh, bear form that to mitigate damage. You have to heal less in the end. So this, this is a little, a little sketch here. So this is a situation where um, this is kind of like my burst healing per se. So my target got pretty low. I think he used a health on there. So that was really helpful. My typical burst healing is going to be iron bark, overgrowth, swift mend. And then if I need to regrowth out of that or NS out of that, I will. Otherwise I'll just do a fat rejuve and just hold it. So I'll, in this case, I didn't even overgrowth there. Oh, I overgrowth after it. Okay. So that, I probably would have done it the other way around. 
So I should have Iron Bark Overgrowth and then Swift Mended because again with your the mastery of Druid, you can the more hots you have on the target, the bigger your heals are gonna be. So if I overgrowth first and then Swift Mend, that Swift Mend gets the bonus the, the benefit of having all those hots on it. Um, so here we go, we have full hots on him. At this point, I'm not really worried. There's not really much I can do unless his health is I have everything on him. And by the way, this is an add-on called Big Debuffs, if you're wondering how you can have six hots on a target frame. Uh, big debuffs and there's a setting to enable six buffs. I have everything on him. I even have a Daphne Swarm on him. Skin, we're juicy. Unless his health's going down. So my option, if this if this burst healing rotation does not work, your your next option is going to be either to NS if it's really big, or regrowth, spam regrowth. And if I feel like I'm in a situation where I need to spam regrowth, I try to save Innervate for that. So in this case, his health is still going down, so I'm gonna have to do more. I end up Scenarian, I Swift Mend again, and then here I, this is exactly what I said I was gonna do. I pressed uh, Innervate, I ended up tranking for the extra hot, and then now I'm in the, now I'm in the mode to start spamming regrowth. I, get, I end up getting Swift Mend back up, so I pop that, and then I go back to my, my regrowthing. Re spamming regrowth is actually not that bad, especially with that buff, this expansion that they got the 40% increased crit to it. Um, so we got out of that. Again, the second they use cooldowns, you need to trade. You cannot play super risky as a druid because if you fall behind, game gets really bad. This is a bad example. I got stunned here. I shouldn't have. Um, no cooldowns though. So again, my my passive hotting is just you know using Sonar and Ward whenever on cooldown, using Adaptive Swarm, trying to keep up life blooms. Not super prioritized though. And you don't want to waste your heals by overhealing. Like in a situation like where I am, I'm not I'm not rejuving myself here. I'll let myself let my Yuseris gift top me at this point. Try to keep my hots on my teammate at all time. It's if, if he's getting trained, I'm trying to keep hots on him at all time. All times. And then just waiting for that burst. So I end up overgrowth thing here. Swift men into NS. Okay, so this was a scenario why NS. So this this was a case. Um I was like trying to think why I NS there. The reason I NS here is because I saw this pally. Um and he one he karma this pally whenever a pally horses at you he's probably gonna hide you so you gotta make sure you either like pre overgrowth pre iron bar whatever it may be I think I, I end up just ns in him here just because I know this guy's coming at me to hodge so he's got this is this is the ideal situation when you are prepared for these situations and you can actually pre hot all these things and then this is what makes druid viable you know people keep saying like i can't heal the burst this is how you heal the burst you have to heal before the burst right and before the bad situations happen so i've got all my hots up before the hodge even came and then now i'm just chilling i have all my hots up i can do whatever i want to do elsewise right i'm not worried about overhealing myself and this is a side note because i'm running the drought legendary the one that um you can't you want to keep region on one target at a time if i'm ever low like that i'll just regrowth myself so that i can save the, the fat rejuves for my partner um not ideal for me to get stunned there but he didn't have his images up so i wasn't too worried i used iron bar because he's taking some damage i end up scenarian flourishing so this is that other combo so you have a bunch of different things to rotate through you can rotate through ns and then you can rotate to scenarian flourish you can rotate to overgrowth like a lot of things to rotate you do not want to use everything at once if you do sometimes you need to because them is just crazy but if you you have to do whatever you can to avoid that whether that be your teammate using defenses at the same time or something like that so i use overgrowth here i'm chilling i don't even flourish as i say so the, this is this is the power of flourish that people i think very over, a lot of other people overlook like i watch other streamers archer streamers like flourish is garbage I really don't think so. I think it's very good in this meta, how because of all the bursts. Um, like if I get an overgrowth scenarian with flourish, that target ain't dying, especially if a death of swarms on them. That th these heals are insane. I'm not healing this guy. His health's just literally not going down below zero or below 100%. All right, so he's got his images here. Now I instantly go to clone, right? Again, instead of healing to the burst, I can CC the burst and then I don't have to heal as much. So I, I double clone him. I end up stunning this guy, but oh, this is a long game, huh? This is a good example. Um, so he's got his one out, he's got more burst. I gotta be ready to probably gonna like end up overgrowthing him here or something. Oh, I stun first, and then I end up overgrowthing, yeah. So make sure I'm pre-hotting here. I use Sinarin. Even though, even though this, even though he's at 70% health, I put everything on him because I know this guy has went up. You know, this works for any other class. I know this is a Windwalker, but you know, this is Avatar, this is Chill Street, this is um whatever it may be, uh, Ascendance, I don't know. 
The second you see their cooldowns, you're popping your you're, you're you're popping your cooldowns before the damage comes. Before it comes, that's the important part. Uh, so at this point, we're good. This is how you know we're starting to get a little bit of a lead. I'm not over. I'm not worried about topping them off. I'm just keeping you know trying to do whatever I can outside of healing. I don't want to sit in the back and just spam heal this guy. That's how you might burn some mana. You don't want to. You always want to uh, mitigate um, overhealing. So this is a case where I need to hot. My heals are just not enough anymore because of the dampening. So I end up, I triple stack my life loom, I scenario in him, and if I need to heal at this point, my, again, like I was talking about my two options, it's either going to be NS or spam regrowth. And my mana is not really relevant a lot of times with dampening. You out mana a lot of classes that Resident Druid, especially like with the new Paladin changes and Disc Priest, don't be afraid to just spam regrowth sometimes, uh, especially later on in the game. So uh, yep, at this point, I, his, heals, his health is still going down, so I'm going to have to start looking at probably your Swift Man whenever I can. I see, see him in his head. So I end up dotting him up and then start, and I'm probably gonna probably hop my healer here or hop my DPS. So I see his images here. This was bad on my part. So I had a, I had a force trinket there. I ended up using NS. And again, I swift med before the NS. So the NS is bigger. That was a bad, that was a, that was a, a flaw in my play right there because seeing, I had a second to see that he popped his images and I, instead of, instead of uh, walking away, geez. How far back did I just go? Oh, okay, right here. Um, and I, I, there was a second where I saw his images here, like right there. I should not have been going for a clone here. He's at half health with the images up. I should have backed out, iron barked him, and then start healing him. So because of this misplay, I was forced to have to trinket. So I reju Swiftman NS, and then now I go for the clone, and then I'll probably start hot my guy up here. Yeah, hot him up. You can use thorns. We get him really low. I think he lives this so, which is crazy. But again, not super over worried about overhealing, especially you know with Swiftman regrowth. It could you know sitting at seventy five percent is not a big deal unless you're in a threat to die. This is the point where in the game where I'm trying not to hot so much. I'm trying to just do more damage because the more damage I can do, the more the more uh, the more defensive they play, and then I have to heal less. And then we end up killing him here. So I thought this was a good example of a game that's a little more, um, a little more active on how, how much I had to actually heal and whatnot. And um, I hope you find this helpful. I feel I know this was kind of not the best organized, but hopefully you got some tips out of this maybe. And uh, hope if you guys have any questions, always feel free to ask in the comments. I'll try to get to all of them and answer them. I definitely read them all. I'll try to answer all of them when I can. And thank you guys so much for watching and hope you have a great day. Peace.